check, check, check. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello everyone. Thank you for joining us for a wedding photography webinar with Zach and Jody Gray. We have a packed house today and we really appreciate you attending our event. My name is Sai and I'll be your host for this presentation. Some quick housekeeping items before we move ahead. On your screen to the left is the GoToWebinar viewer through which you will see the presentation. To the right is the GoToWebinar control panel where you can select an audio mode and ask questions. Our presentation today will last for about 40 minutes, after which we'll be open for Q&A. As we go through the webinar, please leave us your questions in the questions box you see on your control panel, and we will answer as many questions as time permits after the presentation. Last but not least, this webinar will be recorded and sent to you via email in 48 hours. With the housekeeping items aside, let's move on to the webinar. We're privileged to have Zach Gray and Jody Gray as our presenters today. Zach and Jody have an extremely impressive resume, starting their career with just a dollar five hundred gig and turning it into a six-figure business in less than a year. Now that's really impressive, and we appreciate them sharing their wedding business insights with us today. With no further ado, I will hand it to Zach Gray, who will take us through the presentation. What's up, everybody? Hey, guys. We're so glad you're here. Yeah, we just want to say a huge, huge thank you to all of you guys for tuning in and signing up and coming to the webinar and giving us some of your time today to, to listen to some of the information that we have to share with you guys. And, of course, we want to thank Sandus for making this happen because without them, we would still be in our PJs in bed this morning working from our computers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we just want to encourage you guys, ask questions as you go. They're going to tally those together at the end, and we're going to answer as many questions as we can. And as the, we go through the keynote today, you may f see something that is important to you that you want to follow up question about. So go ahead and ask that as we go. Um, so as we go through the keynote, we're also just going to show you guys some fun eye candy here and there. Um, to keep you guys uh, highly visually engaged. So we're going to start by just short, uh, going through a little bit really quickly of what Sai mentioned about our story and talk to you guys about how we built our business from making next to nothing to turning it into a serious business. So as mentioned, um, we did our first wedding in 2007 for a whopping $500, and then from there, the rest of the year, we went ahead and we raised our pricing to $1,500, and we booked 19 weddings that year. And we were so stoked, and we thought we were killing it until we started running some numbers, and we realized we weren't killing it as much as we thought after expenses, and we knew that something had to change in our business. Yeah, we were going to have to shoot 40 or 50 to 60 weddings a year to make about $45,000 a year gross uh, after paying all of our expenses. At the rate we were charging. At the rate we were charging, and we realized something had to change. So we realized that we needed to work on the business because we really didn't know much about that. We were good at hustling. We were good at trying to uh, get clients, but we weren't good at trying to you know, really figure out how to run a business. So going through um, the fall of 2007, we started talking to photographers about how to really run a successful business that made a good profit. And then we became avid business book readers and read a ton, about 10 different business books. We launched, relaunched our business in 2008 with a five-year goal of making a six-figure income. And within two months, we were on our way that year to making a six-figure income. And today, what we want to share with you guys is some, just a few of the tools that we used to get our business moving in that direction. So we only have a limited amount of time with you guys, which is unfortunate. We love to hang out with you guys for hours and hours, but we know you all have to be places. Um, so we're going to share as much as we can in the short amount of time that we have. The first key that we want to share with you, we have five keys that really that uh, that we want to communicate in this time that really helped get our business to the place that we wanted it to go. And the first key is to have purpose. And you may see, you may think, oh my gosh, this is not important. Why do I need to talk about this or think about this? But it's important to know where you're going as you start to make those steps towards a business. And we went through this exercise and it really helped give us focus and direction. So in helping create purpose in your business, there's a 
uh, uh, exercise that Jody and I go through that has helped us to create purpose, which has really helped our business to move forward in the way that we wanted it to. And we start with this. We start with creating vision for our business, and a vision is simply a why statement. Why does our business exist? And we encourage you guys to walk through this on your own. Spend a week really hashing this out and going through it. So this is the overall arching, broad idea of why your business exists. And after a lot of talking and going back and forth, Zach and I created our vision, and we realized that our overarching idea for our business was to improve the quality of people's lives and to make our business about something bigger than ourselves. That's a great vision statement because it's very broad and it's about something bigger than ourselves. It's about something more than just us taking cool pictures or making money because ultimately those things really won't fulfill you. A great why statement will help you to feel very, very fulfilled in your business. So number two, we need to create a mission and your mission is how are you going to fulfill that vision. So our mission is to enhance the marriages of our couples through wedding photography that is relationally based. So when we are running a wedding business, that was our goal, is we wanted to build strong relationships with our couples and focus on marriage. And then when we have something like that to look forward to, that we're going to help enhance people's marriages through any information and tools that we've uh, utilized in our own marriage, that gives us a great reason to get up every day and to work on our business because we're able to, even in a small way, change someone else's life. Next is we have to have values in our business and our values are the filter. They filter out all the decision making processes. So if something comes at us and we're not sure what to do, if we look at our values or our, which become our filter, we know what we should be doing and what we shouldn't be doing, what to say yes to and what to say no to. So for example, some of our values is freedom. We want to have freedom and flexibility. We want peace. We want to run our business with integrity. Faith is really important to us. We want to make sure that we're being generous and that hard work is a great value. And so then we start to structure our business decisions around that. So for example, if weekends with your family are one of your values, then maybe, or maybe Saturdays with your family are one of your values, then maybe you're not shooting weddings on Saturdays. Or So do you see how you're kind of making decisions based on the values that you create? And oftentimes people start with the goals. They say, I want to make $100,000 a year, so I need to shoot uh, 30 weddings at $3,500 a pop. And so they're killing themselves throughout the whole year, and their values are going to the wayside. They're not spending time with their family. They're not taking care of the things that should be the filters for making all business decisions. And again, like Jody mentioned, if we start with our goals, our goals can run over our personal lives. They can run over our filters and our values if we don't do it in this order of importance, which is making sure our filter or our values come first. The last one is our goals, and we want to make sure that our goal setting, which is our what, what exactly are we going to do? Now that we have this vision, we have a mission, we have our values, now how do we set these goals into moving forward with our business? So we know probably a lot of you are married out there, and if we took a poll right now and asked you to raise your hand on how many people of you think marriage is easy all the time, um, there probably would not be a lot of hands raised. And we knew that the majority of people walking through our doors, you know, statistically half of them are going to get a divorce. So it was our goal that we wanted to enhance their lives like we talked about. And so we tried to think of simple and practical steps that we could do that would enhance their marriages and help set their marriage up in the long run to be stronger. So we'd love to share all the ones that we did with you, but we're going to share a simple practical example of that, which is this. When Jody and I decided we want to enhance the marriages of couples through wedding photography that is relationally based, we went, what's a simple practical step that we can do to infuse that every time we meet a new couple, whether we book them or not? And that's to get them this book on marriage that we read when we were engaged that had a huge impact on the first year of our marriage. And we hand write a note inside of it saying exactly that. This really changed our marriage from the get-go. And we know that the beginning of the foundation of your marriage is really important. So we want you guys to have this and to read this book together. And that right there is the first step in our business, among many steps, that changes the dynamic of the relationship we have with our couples and the way that they view us as a vendor. It communicates to them that we you know, care about them more than just a bride and groom, someone cutting us a check. And remember, that was part of our overall mission statement is we wanted to run our business with our clients that was relationally based, and that helps build that relationship. 
All right, so now that we have the first uh, section of this uh, keynote put together purpose, we want to go through our first shooting tip, which is our natural light shooting tip. So when Jody and I are photographing in natural light, we like to use great systems so that we can make sure we know that we're getting great images anytime. So we want to show you guys this three-step uh, system that we use to nail great natural light images in the camera every time. And using this image on the screen as an example, we're going to show you guys the before this had great light and great color and great everything on it and what happened. So here's the three steps that we follow. First, we want to make sure we have great quality of light. And a great quality of light, you know, comes from nice, soft, diffused light, not standing in the harsh, direct sun. Another thing that we're really interested in is the height of the light. What is the direction that the light is coming onto our subject? Is it coming from under the chin, which is giving them scary movie lighting, or is it hitting them in a really flattering way? Yeah, and once we have the height right, then the direction, how it's hitting the face becomes critical. And when you have those three things together, we tend to have beautiful lighting on our subject every single time. So let's talk through the three of those. The first one is let's look at these, this, this image before. The bride was walking down the stairs into that good light. She had a window light to camera left. But at this moment, the height wasn't correct. It was too low, so it was lighting up her knees. And as you can see, the rest of her does not look good. As she takes another step down the steps, we get the light hitting her in sort of the stomach and chest area, and it's starting to look a little bit better, but not great yet. When it finally gets into the last position, we have all three of those working for us. We have great quality light because it was soft, beautiful, indirect window light. We have light that's coming in at the right uh, height, which is the center of the light source is above the center of the eyes. And then the last thing that we have is we have great direction of the light more. The majority of the light is hitting her on the side of her face that's away from the camera, which puts some beautiful soft shadows on the side of her face that the camera sees, and therefore makes her look very trim, very beautiful, and just absolutely stunning. It highlights the great parts of her, and that's what we love about great, soft, beautiful light. All right, so step number, key number two is the brand of the business. So we talked about the purpose, having a purpose, knowing where you're going and why. And so now it's important to build a strong and cohesive brand because your brand really reflects the quality of your business. Absolutely. And if your brand doesn't really stand out and doesn't look amazing, then your business, the perception of your business, even if you run a great business and you take great pictures, people aren't going to see that when they look at you online. So we always recommend this. Hire a professional. Unless you're a professional designer, hire someone. And that's exactly what we did to build our website. And so we hired Melissa Love. And what's great about her is she really had us go through this process of flipping through magazines and just finding out things that spoke to who we were. And that's the thing is, yes, we can stand out on images. And photographers can see you know, the differences. But the fact of the matter is, is a lot of Average people can't tell the difference between good images and great images. So if we only rely on that to stand out, then we're missing a huge chunk of ways that we can reach our ideal client. So it's so important to find the things that make you you and then amplify those in your brand and in your website. And having a professional do that for you is key. So what Melissa did for us was she walked us through finding out what we loved, and then she took all of that and turned it into our brand. And we want to point out three really key things that you want to look for when you have your website designed and built. Because the average client goes to a website for 42 seconds, and we want to make sure that we nab them, we draw them in with something unique, something that's different than what everybody else has. So three important things that we want you to focus on when you're working on your website. Number one is we want to make sure that your clients, your potential clients, get to see you and know who you are. And they'll do that when you have a meet us or about us section as one of the first things that they click on and a photograph of yourself. Like we can't stress how important it is to put an image of yourself on your site. And make sure you're communicating your personality. I think it's always fun to have like cool rock star photos taken of yourself, but I've seen photographers who have killer personalities, but they have this serious, all slick photo of them for their bio photo, and it's so important, especially as wedding photographers, what we do is very personal to show the personal side of you. So we have an about section, and if you visit our site, then you can see all the more details that we have sharing who we are as individuals and not just photographers. So the next important thing is to show the relationship that you build with your clients. If you don't have any clients yet, then you can't do that yet, but as soon as you do, showcase that. And this is us with one of our couples just goofing off, going to coffee together and having fun. 
And that's important for clients to realize that we're real people, we're a real business, it's Zach and Jody, we use our first names, and we can't wait to hang out with you and be a part of your lives. And this all goes back to our mission statement and our values. We want to have a relationally based business with our clients. And that's not for everyone, but see how our website is tying and pointing back into that as well. Exactly. And then the last thing, of course, is you want to show your work. You don't need to show 150 photos at a time because clients aren't going to necessarily look through. Even if your pictures are amazing, they're not going to see all of those. Um, but make sure you do show 20, 30, 40 uh, photos of your favorite work. And one of the most important things we can't stress is, especially if you shoot weddings or seniors or babies, you've got to show the emotional content first because people put themselves in place of that bride. If a bride comes to our site, she's imagining she's that bride. And when she sees that, she goes, man, I want my wedding day to be that emotional. Then every two or three images is an emotional one, and then it's okay to show something that has a lot of drama or your unique signature, the look that you create for your photos. And for us, it happens to be a lot of interesting off-camera lighting. And part of our values is we want to have fun with what we do, and that's creating really stylized images like this. Zach loves using off-camera lighting when we shoot, so it's important for us to do that. Um, and we want to showcase it, just not every single image. Uh, and then last thing with your website is make sure that you're consistent. One of the biggest uh, um, keys that a lot of people don't realize is the average uh, consumer needs to see a brand 7 to 12 times before they begin to trust that brand. So if your brand is online and it has consistent cohesive, it's co consistently cohesive and people every time they see your Twitter or your Facebook or your blog or your website or your business card, they know that it's you because it all looks the same and is branded the same. That's really going to help build trust with your potential clients. And as hard as it is, even on your personal Facebook page, sometimes you want to throw up a photo of your kid as the avatar, and I've been tempted, <laughs> but so far we've held off nine months later. But it's important to have that consistency on every place that you're displayed online. Absolutely. So coming to the end of that section, we want to talk about our next shooting tip, which is off-camera lighting. So when Jody and I go out on location, we want to make sure that our first light and the most important thing is to have some sort of light with us because you never know what kind of circumstances you're going to run into, especially at a wedding. You could have everything seemingly perfect and then all of a sudden you deal, have to deal with a really difficult lighting situation. One small light, this is a 26 inch rapid box that we always bring it with us is this rapid box. And it's very simple. It uses a light that you probably already have, which is your speed light. You stick it on a stand or have an assistant hold it. And here's the power of what it can do. Jody and I were photographing this wedding in 2013, and the bride and groom decided to have their first dance at, after sunset on an outdoor stage with zero light except for a little bit of light from the video guy. This was terrible, and we were like, oh, what are we going to do? So luckily, of course, we always bring some lights with us. So we set up the rapid box, we balanced it with the sky, we, because we've been doing lighting a long time, we added two more lights in the background, which were not necessary, but just added a little extra flare, and then we we're able to take this lighting situation and turn it into this. Now that's the power of off-camera lighting, and becoming really, really good at using a tool like that can save your butt and create stunning, stunning photographs for you. All right, so key number three is the dreaded sales. Dun, dun, dun. Now, oftentimes we think of sales as, you know, a slimy car salesman approaching us, or you go in a store and someone's like, can I help you with something? And you're like, no, please leave me alone. Or you see those kiosks and you, they're out for blood. You know, they want to sell you anything that they have. Um, but we want to redefine what sales is. And we love this quote from Dave Ramsey, which is, sales is a beautiful relationship between the buyer and the seller. It's isn't, simply a relationship. Isn't that awesome? A great sales relationship is you provide a product or a service that somebody needs and the exchange is you give them that product and they pay you for it. That's a beautiful exchange. When you go out to buy dinner with your family or go out to buy a new pair of jeans, you don't think of that as a bad sales process. You think of I gave money to get something that I needed, something that was important or something that was emotionally connected to me. And that's what sales is. So we want to walk you guys through our four-step sales process that we use for any type of sales. And all we're doing is we're simply giving our clients an opportunity to buy because they're investing in your wedding photography. And so obviously they're going to get something for that. 
So step number one in, a, in our sales process that we use is qualify. It's very important that you qualify a client. What that means is simply, can they afford you? Do they have the money to pay for it? And can you demonstrate enough value to show them why what you charge is worth it? Do they have a need for your product or service? Are you the right photographer to fulfill their needs? If all of those qualifiers come into line, then they are the right client for you. The next step is rapport. It's important when we get on the phone with clients to build a rapport because here, here's the fact of the matter. The reason we go through this process when people initially call and reach out to us is we want to make sure that we are bringing the people who are the right fit for us, the people who value photography like we do, they're excited about us, and then of course that they're going to um, buy on the tail end and that's where the sales process begins is at the very beginning when we go through this step. So we qualify them and then now we're on the phone with them building rapport. Absolutely. The next, uh, and we want to mention this from Dale Carnegie, I love what he says here about rapport. He says, you can make more friends in two months by becoming genuinely interested in other people than you can in two years by trying to get other people interested in you. Isn't that a really powerful statement? And what I love about that is it flows right into step number three, which is educate. So we want to make sure that we qualify them, that they're the right kind of person for our business, that we build a relationship with them as quick as we can and that we then educate them, and this is the shortest part of the process. We don't want to spend a lot of time educating our clients about us because we haven't built that much of a relationship, so we don't want to talk about ourselves too long. So after we've built that rapport, and by doing that, we're just simply asking questions about themselves. Tell me about yourself. It allows them to talk about anything that they want, anything that's important. And so we're asking these questions and just having a great dialogue talking back and forth. And so it's super great because we're building a relationship with our clients. So that rapport is built. So now, after we have chatted with them, and then we've heard about what they're looking for their wedding days, or say, you know, what's important to you when it comes to your wedding photography? And we're, we've built that rapport, we're talking back and forth, they've shared with us now what's important to them. So now, it's time for us to educate them on the services that we do. And now, once we do that, we're simply talking about you know, what we offer, we're making sure the most important thing we can do, is, especially in the education process, is not just talk about um, the products that we offer and how good co the quality of our photos or our albums are, but to really be storytellers. And that's the most important part of the education process, is to tell the most powerful and engaging story that you have and how you fulfilled the the dream of a bride or the story of a bride and groom or um, the moment that the dad walked down the aisle with his daughter even though he was ill and didn't think he could do that. Find those incredible stories and talk about this is what your business does when you're educating a client about your business. And then of course we talk about at the very end, the close. And when we're in the close, we're talking about, um, we're talking about simply how much we cost, and whether or not a client is ready to purchase this. So what we do at the very end is we always have a very definitive point of sale. In the close, we'll say, uh, use a couple of different methods. One is uh, that Dave Ramsey talks about is called the assumption close. And what he does is he goes, hey, this is what I do. You've come in. You're qualified. We built rapport. I've educated you on my products and services. I've told you the most amazing stories about how my products have enhanced and changed people's lives. And now, which package would you prefer, A, B, or C? And if a client hesitates, then you know you, you missed one of the first three steps. Another way to close is to ask a definitive question, or we call it a definitive point of sale, and saying, does this sound like what you're looking for? And sometimes when you do that, then a client can have the option to go, yes, this is exactly what I want. And if they say that, then you can go, great, let's go ahead and move into the contract and go ahead and sign the contract. Now, if you're chatting with them and they have, they're hesitating, and you ask them, you know, does this sound like what you're looking for? And they're saying, well, I'm not really sure. I don't know what to do. I don't know. I may need to talk about it. So what you want to do at that point is ask them a simple question. What's your hesitation? And it can be a problem that you can solve very easily. So they may say, well, you know, you said it's 50% down, and that's not something I can stretch right now. And you're like, perfect. This is a solution that we know we can do. Well, how about we separate it all into four payments instead of half down and half due before the wedding. And they're like, oh, that's perfect. So you never know that you may be able to solve a problem just by asking. Absolutely. So remember, if you follow this four-step sales process correctly, and if your client is the right client, they always close, always. If they don't close, it's because of one of those first three steps. 
if they don't close, say they say, well, we don't, we're not really sure we can afford it. Well, that step one wasn't followed correctly. They weren't qualified. If they say, I want to go shop around for some other photographers, well, that's because you haven't built enough rapport and they don't trust you. Or if they say that they're not really sure about the product and services that you deliver, that's because we haven't educated them properly on our products and services. If you guys want to see one of the levels that we qualify our clients, you can go to our website, which is just zackandjody.com, and go to our contact form. Right there, it shows a lot of different qualifiers that we put on that help determine if these are a really great fit for us. Absolutely. So, our shooting tip number three is we want to talk about layered composition. So, layered composition is a really, really powerful tool that allows you to sort of take your images to the next level. And a lot of images have a subject and then something in the background. And even though you have great lighting or great composition or a beautiful pose or even a beautiful expression or moment, what can really enhance your image and take it to the next level is adding a third layer into that image. And what we mean by that is a foreground layer. So in this image you can see we we have a foreground layer of the bride and her father walking down the aisle. We have the groom in that center middle layer, and then we have the background layer. And what that does is it really adds this beautiful, especially for a photojournalistic type of photography, it adds this peering in sort of a look on the images. It doesn't look like you're right up in their face. It looks like you were pulled back looking in on a moment at them. So here's another very simple example of just shooting a portrait shot during an engagement session where the bride and groom-to-be are sitting in a field, but we purposely lower the camera slightly, put a little bit of the grass into the foreground, there on the center, and then we have that beautiful uh, image, or that beautiful blur in the background. Uh, another example, shooting live with a, uh, at a wedding. Uh, here's the groom getting ready, putting on his cufflinks, and I purposely pulled back into the bathroom, closed the door slightly so it looked like I was peering in on this moment. So I have that foreground element of the doors, him in the uh, center, and then that background element. And then just a few more, taking a simple image where a lot of times we'll line up the bride and the bridesmaids and we'll shoot a photo of all the flowers. Just moving your camera to the side, putting the bride on the left two-thirds of the screen so she really stands out, and then shooting down that line as a foreground, a middle ground, and a background element, and it really makes the image that much more interesting. Same thing here with a bunch of grooms um, standing just simply out in an open field with some off-camera lighting. When I shot the first image, it wasn't that exciting until I moved the camera down into the ground, and this grass is about two inches tall, but because I'm using a wider lens, it looks really, really crazy, and it looks like they could be standing on a movie set in a sense because you see that foreground, that middle ground, and then that beautiful blue sky in the background. One last example of how to take a shot that's relatively flat and not that um, dynamic, especially because we had a cloudy day. Um, so what, the first thing I did was I took all the groom and the groomsmen and I put them up on the staircase to add a little bit of dimension to them. I put the groom in the top left. As you can see, it was a winter uh, wedding, so they're all wearing their overcoats. But then after I shot the first image, I thought, man, it's not super exciting. Could I add a foreground textured element to that? So I had all the groom, groomsmen and the groom at the same time kick some snow at my camera, and I put my camera on burst mode, and then I photographed this image, and it added some really interesting texture, some foreground element, and it made the image that much more interesting. All right, so we've talked about having a purpose. We've talked about having a great brand, and then also qualifying your clients and being able to close the deal. And now we want to hit up systems. Systems are such, they play such a huge role in your business. We love this quote from uh, Edward Deming that says, 94% of all failure is a result of the system, not the people. If you can't describe what you're doing as a process, you do not know what you're doing. So what happens with a lot of small business, and we'll include wedding and portrait photography into that, is that we have a passion for something. We have a passion for shooting great photos. And one day somebody says, Hey, Zach and Jody, you guys are good at taking pictures. You should get paid to do that. You should get paid to take pictures. And we all go, that is an awesome idea. Let's get paid to do something that we love. And then we start running a business and we realize, man, a lot of what I'm doing is handling client expectations and I'm doing profit and loss statements and I'm paying my bills and have insurance and a lot of stuff that's not actually taking cool pictures all the time. And everything's disorganized and you're running back and forth. You know, you're going to the store five 
different times for all the client gifts that you're getting for your clients and your papers are a mess and you don't know what you're doing next for your clients and things are just chaotic. And that's the last thing that we want to do in our business because then we'll get overworked and burnt out. So what really helps us to get back to doing what we love, taking pictures and having a lot of fun in our business and not feeling overwhelmed with the management, the business side of our business, is to have incredible systems. So it, here's, here's when you need a system in your business. A system is needed anytime you do something more than once and it has more than one step. So if you're taking notes, write that down. If you, if you do it more than once, so as an example, I always download my pictures when we get back from a shoot and then I have to back them up and I have to import them and I have to edit them and the list goes on. That needs a system because I do it more than once and it has more than one step. Anything that fits that description needs this specifically. It needs a written out step-by-step -step manual to follow. And what's powerful about that is when we just follow the systems manual for a client, we never miss anything, we never get behind, and we always know exactly where we are with that particular client. And we have a couple main areas in our business that we want to highlight that we have systems in. So the first area is whenever we go out and shoot, we have a system for shooting. We aren't just running and gunning, flying by the seat of our pants, hoping that we grab the shot. We want a tried and true system that we know that we're going to be able to nail the shot. Absolutely. It's really critical for us to have a great way that we approach every time we shoot so we get consistent results. And having great systems gives us great consistency, which therefore allows our workflow afterwards to go much faster. So the next area that we have a system in is our client management. There are so many different things to do from you have a contract and then you need to follow up with them and then you confirm things with them and you schedule sessions and then you're scouting the location and setting details and there's so many different things that you need to do with your client that it's easy to forget those. So we're making sure that we always have systems with our clients. We have a written thing of we know what we need to do with clients from one step to the next step. So one area that we want to highlight with with client management is we have a great questionnaire that we send clients. We found out that we were emailing our clients and getting on the phone with them and asking these same questions over and over again and it would take a really long time. And Jody actually ran the numbers and realized it was about 51 or 52 specific questions that we would be asking through email and on a phone call and about locations and about bride and grooms, uh, family names and phone numbers and all this stuff. So what I did is I put this questionnaire together which helped gather all that information in one foul swoop. So one question that we have on there, for example, is we ask our bride and grooms what their preparation locations are, where are they getting ready, and to include the address as well as um, travel time between one venue from the next. So all in one shot we have the address, we know how long it takes to get from one place to another so we can build that in the timeline and we know exactly where we're going. Another question Jody would always ask is about family photos and we would actually suggest these are the five family photos that we think you should get and then any additional family photos that you want are going to take an extra three minutes to set up so that we don't show up on the day and they go oh, we want these 87 family photos and it's going to take three hours to shoot those and it kind of eats up the entire wedding day. And what's great is it solves that problem of just having a ton of family photos and if that's what they want then that's totally fine but we want to make sure that we're serving our client but also being extremely efficient on the wedding day as well. Another one is special family situations. There's nothing worse than showing up to a wedding and as an example, you're in that, you're shooting some family photos and you say, let's do the bride with her dad and she goes, well, my dad's no longer here and you just overlooked that because we forgot to ask or there's divorces in the family and there's special situations. So we always want to make sure we ask about that stuff so we don't put our foot in our mouth on the wedding day. A fun thing we do for after is um, we're always getting their first dance song. So we get that information from them in this questionnaire and then after when they come back to our home, when they would come to our home for sales sessions, we would show their album design, designed to a slideshow and guess what the song is that we would use for that. We would use their first dance song and they absolutely loved it that, that we would remember and it was just something really special and meaningful to them but as we were shooting the wedding we would forget so that's why we put it in this questionnaire so we would always have it and remember it. And from a marketing perspective it, always, it also creates a powerful emotional experience for the couple. And Jack Trout, who wrote the book The 22 Immutable Laws of Marketing, says that people make purchasing decisions based on their emotional connection to a product or service. So if we want people engaged with us, we have to deliver on that end. 
Uh, number five is wedding party names, and this is something powerful that we use later for marketing as well. We get all the wedding party names, and then Jody after the wedding would tag them all on Facebook and then send them all some photos, and then our potential future clients would know who we are and be excited about us. All right, so moving on to shooting tip number four, we want to talk about enhancing natural light. Now, a lot of us may have heard about this and may know about using reflectors, but very few of us actually do it, and we want to highlight um, get our free gear list. If you go to zachandjody.com slash store and then go under resources, we actually have a free gear list that you can download. It costs you absolutely nothing. And it gives you a comprehensive list of every single piece of equipment that we use with, with links and why we use those pieces of gear. So talking about reflectors, which is one of the most important pieces of gear to have in your gear bag, we want to talk about three simple ways that we use them to get great results. And I love this beautiful uh, sketch art that my wife's sister made for us. And what this right here shows you is if the sun is coming over the back of our client and we don't have the greatest light on their face, we'll use the white side of the reflector and we put it nice and high. Remember earlier we talked about the center of the light source being above the center of the eyes? That's exactly where we put the reflector to bounce light back into their face. And this is the kind of result we get. Sun coming over the back, but beautiful light. And check out his eyes. They just sparkle with, with the reflector uh, reflecting in them. Number two is if it's, we have a cloudy day and there's all these shadows coming down under people's eyes, we'll take a silver side of our reflector and we'll put it underneath their chin or in the opposite direction that the, the, the natural light is coming from to bounce light back in. And what happens is we take an image like this where all the light's coming straight down and doesn't look that great. It looks soft, but it doesn't look that great. And we add that beautiful light into the eyes uh, with the reflector bounced in the opposite direction of the natural light. The last one is any time we're out shooting and we have uh, really tough, harsh uh, sunlight like this, which can be very tricky to shoot in, we like to pop out a diffuser if we can. So we'll take a diffuser and we don't just stick it straight over their head, but we'll put it at a 45 degree angle. The center of that light source, again, is above the center of the eyes, but it's not too high or too low. And then when we take our image, boom, all of a sudden we have this beautiful, soft light on our subject that just looks phenomenal. All right, our last key that we want to share with you in building your business from the ground up is momentum. Now, momentum isn't random like a lightning strike. It's actually created. And we love this quote that says, once you have momentum, people start to believe that your brand is better than other brands because you are everywhere. Have you guys ever followed another photographer or someone else in business that you may like or somebody online and you? it just seems like, Every time you see them, they're always doing something and everybody's talking about them and everybody's following them on Twitter and they have all these Facebook fans and their business just seems to be working. And we tend to think in our minds, man, they just have the magic thing or the magic bullet or something unique happened to them. But the reality is, is that momentum is something that can be created. It's not intangible, but it's something that you can create. And we're going to show you guys how. All right, so the first momentum key is focus. To have a focus on something and be dedicated to it is so important. Oftentimes, a lot of photographers are like, well, I want to do seniors, I want to do weddings, I want to do all at the same time. And the problem is, is our focus gets diverted. This quote, again, from Dave Ramsey says, our culture has become afflicted with ADD, so much so that anyone or any business that can maintain its focus has an almost unfair advantage in the marketplace. Yeah, and we say that all the time. It's hard to be the baby wedding senior portrait and dog photographer all at the same time because you, do, you have a lack of focus. But when you decide I'm going to be a wedding photographer with this specific type, for these specific type of clients, and I'm going to dive into that community, that's how you maintain focus and start to build momentum. Mm -hmm. Step number two is not just to focus, but to focus with intensity. You know the difference between I'm paying attention to something and I'm intently paying attention to something. My eyes are fixed to that target. Now, if any of you know my husband, Mr. Zach Gray, Zach, when he gets excited about something or he wants to learn something, he is super intense on it. He will go and read. He's the one that reads all of the camera manuals and anything that he gets, he will read 100% and he will go out and practice and learn. And that's something that he did for our business, especially when it came to lighting. So you may look at some of his lighting images yet. Some of his lighting images, and you may think, oh my gosh, he's awesome. He's just always been awesome, but alas, he is not. So this is when he was first <laughs> practicing with lighting. So here's one of my very first uh, off-camera lighting shots, aka on-camera, because it was on the camera. 
And I'm like, Jody, let's go out by this little water thing, and I'm going to shoot this awesome photo of you, and here's the result. Doesn't look that great. Pretty flat lighting and pretty dull. Uh, my first artist shoot I ever did, here it is, using a, literally a deer light that you use to spot deer with an orange diffuser over it and shooting it into a cloudy sunset light. And I used a wide-angle lens, so his hands look gigantic. Uh, not very good. But, like Jody said, I am intense, and I'm intensely focused when I want to learn something. And because of that, in a very short amount of time, I was able to start photographing off-camera lit shots like this. And you're doing very dynamic, dramatically lit wedding images live. During the wedding day, we were able to do this kind of stuff. And shooting artists on album covers um, with really powerful off-camera lighting, that's much more complex to do. And that's what focused intensity will do. But then there's one more step. We need one more step. That step is time. It's not going to happen overnight. If you decide to be focused with intensity, it's not going to happen in two minutes. So some people can focus for a little bit, and they can focus hard for a little bit, but you need time to really make that momentum happen. So focus intensity over time creates that synergy. It gives you that momentum. Yeah, and as an example, you know, we talked about in the beginning, we shot our first wedding in June of 2007 for 500 bucks. And we had focused intensity and time, about one year of time, to focus on our business. And by June of 2008, we were charging $4,000 and up just to show up to photograph a wedding. We had a purpose. We had a brand. We had momentum. We had clients. Um, but what we wanted was money and freedom and the ability to create a business that was lasting. And all of a sudden, because of our focus, intensity, and time, our business was able to achieve that. Now, we're not guaranteeing this. We're not saying if you do these things, you will succeed. But your chances of success will go tremendously higher. And we got it because we were working harder than, ever, than everyone else. We were creating that momentum. We were super focused. So today we've talked about five really important key areas. The number one thing was purpose and making sure that your brand is about a why statement first and goals last. And then we talked about brand. Building trust reflects for quality. Blah. <laughs> Once you've built trust with your brand, your brand also reflects that quality. Uh, we talked about sales and the sales system. and It's simply a beautiful relationship between the buyer and seller. And then systems. It's important that your business runs very efficiently. And effectively. Yes. Uh, and then the last one was momentum, and how do we create momentum? That's that focused intensity over time. So Jody and I are not done yet. We're going to go through some amazing Q&A, but before we do that, we realize that you guys have given a lot to be here. You guys have given up a lot. Jody and I literally were up till 1 in the morning working hard trying to create uh, or finish this thing for you guys, and we created a free... A photography business toolkit that has our 54 must-have tools to give your business a head start. So starting a business can seem really daunting. So what we did is we have created this shortcut for you. So it's our essentials toolkit that will give you all the little tips and tricks of the tools that we have used in our own business for branding to marketing and all that stuff is right there for you. So what Sai is going to do is he's going to drop a link into the comment box for all of you guys to simply click on that link and to get that toolkit if you want to get it. And when you do, when you click to sign up to get that toolkit, you're also going to get all of our blog updates, which simply have more free information, just like we went through today, for you guys. That's going to come right to your inbox a couple of times a week. So tons of awesome information, plus that awesome toolkit, and there's going to be some other goodies coming your way that you don't even know about yet. All right, so we're going to turn it back over to SanDisk and take some of your questions. All right, uh, Jody, Zach, thanks a lot. This was a great presentation. You know, beautiful photos. You shared with us a lot of your, you know, insights or even secrets, I might say. Um, yeah, the link is in the in the uh, comment box in your control panel, so you can get the book from there. We'll also be sending the 15% e-store coupon in the email, which will yes. follow this presentation. So, um, again, thanks a lot. So we will uh, we'll take Q&A right now. Like I said, um, Zach, there's been a lot of questions already in, um, so I'm going to jump right into the first one. Um, and then, you know, we'll go to the question just time permits. Awesome. All right. So, um, yeah, so, you know, I, I think uh, starting off, there were some questions about business books. You know, what kind of books do you guys read? Are there top, you know, two books, three books that you uh, read about photography business? So. Yeah, so the, we have a ton of great recommendations. We'll maybe share our top favorite, and then if you guys go to photographers.zachandjody.com, we have a whole list of all of the books that we recommend and read ourselves. Yeah, so Jody and I read a number of different books. 
when we first started our business back in fall of 2007. And one of our, I would say, let's give them our top three. Our top three business <laughs> books would be uh, one, Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People. That book will really teach you how to interact with people in a really positive way that makes every interaction more about them and less about you, which simply draws people to you. Because you can't build your business without having relationships. You're building relationships with your vendors and you're also building relationships with your clients. So that is a killer book to read. Yeah, another awesome book that we read uh, back in the day was Seth Godin's The Purple Cow. And The Purple Cow is a book about um, teaching you how to stand out in your business. If you're driving through a field and you go to cow country and you're seeing all these brown cows, after a while they all start to blend together. And that's how it can be with wedding photographers or portrait photographers, any type of photographers, because there's so many of us. Um, so if you all of a sudden are driving through that field and you see a purple cow, you pay attention. So the whole point of that book is how can you become a purple cow in your business? Cool. Um, just a note to the audience, uh, we are recording the session, so we'll be sending the, um, you know, a YouTube link for the session, so if you're taking notes, uh, that's good, but, you know, we just want to back up with a video that you can always look at and go to the Q&A also in the video. Um, so, okay. so I, one, yeah. one more that I would recommend, too, just before we hop off the book sure. topic, is a book called, uh, by Michael Gerber called The E-Myth, or The Entrepreneurial Myth, and that really was probably the fundamental book in us starting our business, Why Most Small Businesses Fail and What to Do About It, and that was an incredible, incredible book. Perfect. Uh, thanks, Zach. So uh, I think the next one's from uh, John, and there were a few questions along the same lines about, you know, as a single shooter, uh, how can you cover all the key parts of the wedding day with bride and groom? If the groom is staying in a different venue to get ready, um, how can you photograph groom and bridal prep? Um, so basically questions about, okay, if I have just one person doing the whole thing, how do I do it? Because there's a few other questions along the same lines. As photographers, you know, we're trained that like, okay, we need to shoot the bride, we need to shoot the groom getting ready, but, you know, like you said, there's only one of you, so I would first chat with the bride and groom and see what they're looking for, and some grooms don't care, and brides and grooms don't care if the grooms have any getting wedding ready photos, so I would just have a conversation with them, and if that's something that's really important to them, one, you can spread out the timeline to give you time to go see the guys first, then go to the girls and take photos, or something else that you can do is um, hire another shooter. <laughs> yeah, another important thing, too, to go along those lines is to make sure that we're the professional photographers, and it's really important that we help guide and lead our clients in the best way possible that serves them the best way. So something that we've always done is we recommend to them, they don't have to do it, we recommend they get ready in the same vicinity, they're within arm's reach of each other, so that as a single shooter we can cover all the bases because we want to be able to serve them the best. Perfect. The next one's from Kirk. Um, this is about, you know, uh, what we're photographing a group, so would you use two rapid boxes to light a group? That's a great question. If I'm lighting a group of people, I'm definitely going to use an umbrella if I can. Uh, Wes Scott makes an umbrella that you can use with your 580 um, that's uh, called the, the, the Wes Scott Parabolic. It's only 99 bucks and it's 7 feet in diameter. The great thing about an umbrella is light comes out in every direction. It shoots out at about 180 degrees and it has great coverage. If you're using something like a rapid box, it's designed to shoot a little more straight towards a client, a little more directional. So it's not the best light for shooting a ton of people at a time. It's good for one or two people. Cool, Kirk, I hope you got that. Um, let's jump um, into a little bit more about business for this question it's from Patrick. How do you balance nine to five jobs while you're building your business and still have time for yourself in you know, relationships? So it's more about entrepreneurship and yeah. <laughs> That's a loaded question right there. We've, do, we've done it. so That is really hard. Um, it's really hard to do, to be honest with you. But I think writing a list of your priorities first and foremost, and I think when you honor your priorities first, everything else falls into place. You know, when we were first starting out, both of us had day jobs, then Zach quit his day job, and then I was still working 40 to 45 hours a week, and then, um, you know, we'd come home, have client meetings, and we'd be brainstorming and creating all of our marketing stuff, and then we'd have shoots, and then we'd be out of town on the weekends, and I'd come back, and I'd go back, you know, in the office Monday morning and you know it came to a point in 2008 in the summer where we knew something had to go so we had to make the tough decision that even though I still wanted to keep working my day job 
that we knew we had to let it go. So it's kind of figuring out, okay, what's most important, but also setting aside that time of, okay, tonight's date night with my spouse and my kids or whatever, and I'm not going to let anything overtake that time. And you'll be amazed at the little time that you do have left, how efficient you can be. And two, two things to follow up with that that can't be, you know, we talked about them. One is momentum, focused intensity over time. If you're focused with intensity, you're not fiddling around with a side business. When you have two hours to work, you are intently working on the most critical things in your business. The other thing is, uh, um, what is the other thing? <laughs> the, uh, the, so the focus intensity is absolutely critical. And then the other thing is going to be um, making sure you have incredible systems. You should be focusing on your systems first because I can, do, I can edit an entire wedding front to back in two and a half hours of 4,000 photos. The average photographer takes them 22 hours. So if I was running a side business and spending 22 hours of my week just editing photos, then I'm wasting a lot of time instead of focusing on a great system that allows me to take on more with my side business in less time. And just a quick side note for those of you who may want to go full time with your photography business, say you're making $45,000 a year in your day job and you're waiting for your photography business to make that much money in order to quit. Well, a good rule of thumb is if you're making 50% out of your photography that you make in your day job, so half of $45,000, then that's a great indicator to quit because once you do quit, you'll have all of that time now. You'll have 40 hours a week now that you can put into your business, and if you have that intensity and that focus and that momentum, your business, your photography business will quickly grow to exactly where it needs to be. And, of course, that's just one step. You've got to make sure you have... Um, your debt's under control, preferably no debt, and uh, money reserves in the bank as a cushion. Um, so keep that in mind. But we have more information on that uh, in our blog and on our Facebook. All right. Uh, so we'll jump to a shorter question, maybe next one. And this is from Scott. Do you guys have a um, uh, go-to company for wedding album printing? Yeah, absolutely. So what we use, and it's actually in the Photo Business Essentials Toolkit, um, we recommend our how we create albums and all the products and services that we made for our clients when we ran our wedding business. So we recommend KISS Wedding Books, and their website is kiss.us or kiss.us. And what they have that's really unique is you can build an album, proof an album, and order your album all from their system, which no other company is a, allows you to do. And for our prints, um, we use Bay Photo Lab. And if you go to our blog, zachandjody.com slash blog, you'll see that we just recently put up some thin wraps on our walls and canvases from Bay Photo, and you can actually see those on there. And we absolutely love them. So those are two great resources for albums and you know wall decor. And but again, stuff. all of those are in our Photo Business Essentials kit that you can download for free and get links and information on all of that. All right, thank you guys. The next one's from um, Ivan. So aside from sending clients the book about the most important year, what are some of the other things you suggest to be more personal with clients? An important question. Absolutely. So another thing that we do is we try to look at any opportunity during, you know, we if you've been married before, you kind of know uh, or if you've gone through the wedding process, you know what some of the pain points are uh, during the wedding process. And we looked at that uh, kind of strategically and we said, you know, two weeks before our wedding, we were, all we were thinking about was the wedding day and all these details and we were barely even focused on our relationship. So one thing that we did, as another practical example, is about a week or two before the wedding, we would send our bride and groom a $10 Starbucks gift card and we would write a little note saying, we realize you guys are in the thick of it. Um, you're really focused on the details, but don't forget, this wedding is about your relationship. So go out, have a coffee on us, and no wedding talk allowed. And that simple little 5 or $10 gift card gift went a long way where our clients would email us or call us and say, oh my gosh, we forgot why we were even doing this. And thank you for giving us an hour of our relationship back. Another fun idea is after we book them, we send them this fun form for them to fill out, um, like favorite movies they wish they owned, favorite places to eat, favorite soft drinks, favorite date night spot, whatever. And so we collect all this information from the couple, and then we utilize that later to whether to send them like a little gift basket of their favorite candy or to send them out on a date night. And it doesn't even have to be big and extensive things to do. It's things that just show that you're making these little efforts and doing these personal touches, but that's always a fun thing to be able to utilize in different ways is that client questionnaire, question, get to know you thing. All right. 
we're going to jump back into shooting the event again. Um, I'd like to know more about shooting process. Um, how do you ensure that consistency in your images and making sure you get those must-have images? So this is from Ryan. Yeah, so that's a great question. So a couple of things that Jody and I always do is we always get a key shot list and we specify what that is. We're going to take all the key photos through the day, but if the bride and groom have a specific thing like, hey, by the way, these cufflinks were given by my grandfather, we want to know that, so we make sure to get a photograph of that. But then other than that, we kind of have a game plan of going into the day um, as we walk into each segment, we kind of break the day down into segments as a team, and we say we have the getting ready, we have the portraits, we have the ceremony, we have the post-ceremony, whatever happens at that moment, and then we have reception and certain things, and then the exit. And Jody and I always have some key images in our back pocket that we always want to photograph. And here's something I think is important to do, is to shoot your key images, but then also take some risks. Do something a little out of the box. As an example, we always shoot the same kind of thing for the exit shot, but Jody can nail that every time. So I have Jody shoot that, and I pull way back across the street and shoot it with an 85 millimeter lens wide open, which is dangerous to do, you know, but just to do something different for the couple. Um, so that's, that's some of the things that we do. Um, as far as how do we shoot consistently, that comes down to systems again. That comes down, we have a very specific process that we outline in some of our digital workshops where we go through these four, five, six, or seven specific steps. Every time we do an off-camera lighting shot, we do these same steps, and then we shoot and get creative around that, and we know we're going to nail it. Same thing with, our off, our, with natural lighting. We always pick a certain lighting, composition, accessory, lens, and then we white balance and expose our camera the same way every time and get completely consistent results and then shoot most of what we can on manual all the time. And so by having those processes, which, gosh, I wish we had so much more time to actually like walk through those, by having those processes, it gives that consistency. So like we mentioned earlier, we're not going out and just guessing. All right. Um, I think we have a few questions coming about the, the first dance song, so I'm just going to read, read one. Um, is that a copyright problem with using the first dance song in the slideshow? Um, do you guys, how do you work that? It's something that we are just showing in our home studio. So we so, don't sell it. Yeah, so we're just playing um, the slideshow, you know, okay. via Lightroom and then just playing the song. Yeah, we're using it as a way to enhance the experience of seeing their album for the very first time, but we don't actually sell that package together. We just sell the album. All right, perfect. Um, the next one's from Giovanni. What do you recommend to get potential clients in the door? The few consultations I have, um, I can usually close, but my issue is getting them through the door in the first place. Hmm, that's, that's a great question. So, um, you know, when we very first started out, um, everybody has that problem. In the very beginning, you, you know, we talk a lot about when you have clients, here's ways to get them to go and sell, resell you and to get their friends to come and here's how you create a great experience for your clients. But what if you don't have any clients in the first place? What exactly are you going to do? One practical example of what Jody and I did was just because you don't have a network yet doesn't mean somebody else doesn't have a network yet. So there's two other in wedding photography, there's two, there's multiple places, but there's two key areas that people already have networks and that brides are already coming to. And those places are um, wedding planners and venues and then other photographers. So if you can build key relationships with those people and demonstrate the value of what you can do, then those people can start referring you their personal clients. And when you get more clients of your own, then you can do the favor back to them. So a practical example of that was when Jody and I first started out, we you know, had just a couple of clients and we needed more. And we needed new clients, people that could afford our new pricing. So something Jody did is we went online and we Googled the top 30 Nashville wedding planners in our city. And we went and looked at their sites, their blogs, got some personal information about them, looked at their Facebook pages, got a bunch of info, and then instead of sending them an email and saying, hey, can you put me on your preferred vendor list, which doesn't work, we instead wrote handwritten letters with $5 Starbucks gift cards that said, hey, we've heard you're one of the top planners in town. We are, running, we are starting a wedding photography business. We've been shooting for X amount of time, and we have this much experience. And we would love to get together with you and hear more about your incredible business. And that's a Dale Carnegie um, tool, which is 
make it about them, not about you, because they don't care about you. And then we sent this $5 Starbucks gift card that said, we'd love to have a cup of coffee, coffee with you on us. And out of those 30 that we sent out, about 10 or 11 of them sat down and actually, or maybe, or sorry, seven or eight of them about sat down with us for coffee, and three or four of them started referring us immediately after that. And if three or four planners refer you five weddings a year, that's a wedding business. Perfect. Cool. So, the, uh, you know, I want to ask a question about, um, I think it's about galleries on your website. So what is the best way to do galleries on the website? Several full weddings with 60 images each or one gallery with a lot of weddings, uh, slideshows, a blog post. I think this is more about, you know, when you guys showed your website and designs. So how do you show showcase your uh, portfolio? Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a really great question. Keeping in mind that the average client doesn't go to a site for very long. Even photography websites get just a few short minutes of traffic on average. And our goal is to, uh, this is your goal with your website. Your goal is to draw people in, get them excited about what you do, and leave them wanting more, a.k.a. make them want to hit contact and get more information from you. So what we've always done is less is more. We always had about 30 photos only of our top emotional favorite work in one gallery only. I know some photographers will put, you know, an entire wedding of so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so. And I do think that's important if somebody asks to see a whole wedding, but I do think that it just completely overwhelms a client. And if you think about the, the attitude you have as a consumer when you walk into the soup aisle at, at Walmart, you go into the soup aisle and there's thousands of soups to choose from and you get annoyed when you get there. You get overwhelmed and you just go to your favorite and you pick it out and you leave. So you've got to think the same way. People, even though they're looking for great wedding photography, they don't need to see thousands or hundreds of images. We recommend 30 to 40 images tops. Oh gosh, we still have questions coming in. There's so many more questions and we're already at the time. So we'll, we'll take one more. Um, and this was about uh, systems, um, Jerry. So do you use a program to help manage clients and information? If so, which one? That is an awesome question. We have used um, a couple systems in the past and um, they were very convoluted and very hard to use um, and so for the longest time we used Excel and um, yeah the, my, my wife is of course a wizard Excel she's a business management expert and she ran our entire business with all the systems created herself and something that we have realized over the years is that running and managing a photography business is not what a lot of photographers signed up for and it's a pain a lot of the stuff that Jody and I have created for photographers helps them with systems and a process and all that stuff to make it more efficient. Uh, we have a lot of that stuff available. So one thing that we are working on that is super top secret, not a lot of people know about it yet, <laughs> no, is we are working on something that is going to solve this problem like no other person has ever solved it and allow you to do the unthinkable, to get a new client, put them into your system, which we're not going to tell you what it is yet, and to just go back to taking cool pictures and the system is going to handle everything for you. So that's coming soon. We know it's a pain point, but stay. Anybody that's on our email list is going to hear about it coming up in the next few weeks. Uh, so get excited because uh, we are going to solve that problem for you because there really isn't a great solution. There's a lot of other systems out there that have a piece of this and a piece of that, but there isn't really a good all-in-one solution that tells you what to do. Uh, Jack and Jody, I know we're, we're past time here a little bit, and you guys wish you had a lot more time to take questions. Uh, if you guys want to spell out your you know, Twitter handle to, you know, to the audience, they could uh, ping you on Twitter, ask the questions they have. What I'll do is also send you the questions we have um, to you guys, so you probably can you know, hit up this um, audience with, with the answers to some of the questions. Yeah. And uh, yeah, just go ahead and um, give us your Twitter handle so people can Yeah, our you. Twitter handle is just at Zach and Jody, Z-A-C-H-A-N-D-J-O-D-Y. You can see it on the screen there. Instead of the at sign, it's A-N-D. And then you can also hit us up on Facebook, uh, which is the best place to get your question answered because we can type a lot of back and forth. Um, so you can, it's the same thing. It's just uh, Facebook.com slash Zach and Jody. So put your questions there, and we'd love to just chat with you guys and see your faces because we can't see your faces now. And they better be of you, not of your kids. <laughs> Consistent uh, branding. <laughs> um, 
All right, guys. Uh, thanks a lot again, everyone, for uh, attending our webinar. Um, so uh, thank you, uh, Zach and Jody, for the great presentation. So with that, we come to an end uh, today's um, webinar. Thank so you, guys. Thanks, Sandis. Thanks, everyone, for coming in. All right.